stop the FOMO. Do you ever fear of missing out on a good home theater system, or more specifically, a good AVR, an audio video receiver that gives you Dolby Atmos and DTS and Oro 3D, all that good stuff. And among all these great receivers is the Denon, as good as people say. So actually, maybe it should be, are you afraid of missing out on a Denon receiver? Because apparently it's the best. Well, today we're going to talk about whether the Denon is the best receiver out there. And more importantly, if you have the Denon, should you upgrade to a separate pre-pro or a separate processor, cinema processor? And what are you upgrading to exactly? What is it you're upgrading? Whether it's from one Denon AVR to a different brand or a more expensive brand or within its own model lineup, what are you adding? So today I want to explore first, if you're buying a receiver for the first time, why I consider the Denon the best receiver. And if you want to go better than Denon, where do you go? Another brand, a bigger Denon, a Marantz, separate pre-pro. So this has all been brought about actually by my interview with Amir of Audio Science Review. So I've taken a snippet from that interview, the most relevant part, discussing why the Denon is so awesome, but it's only a small part of your decision making. Because if you watch my channel, what does I always say? Use case, use case, use case, as far as TVs, right? OLED TVs, best use case in the dark, bright QLED LCD TVs, best use case in a brighter room, and so on and so forth. Well, with AVRs, it's no different. Amir has his use case. All of this testing is a very specific use case. What I want to narrow down on is these conclusions, these tests, these measurements, how does it apply to you as a consumer? Is it good enough to rely on and say, okay, I'm done, I'm gonna get a Denon. Does that work? We're gonna talk about that at the end of the interview. So we're gonna put up that interview real quick. If you wanna watch the entire interview, I've linked it below and it's a great interview. We talk about speakers like the Genelec, the Klipsch. We talk about reviewing headphones. Who knew that the Bose Quiet Comfort was so awesome? And we talked about the AVRs and the like, which is what we're gonna to hear today. So without further ado, let's roll it a mirror. Okay, if you were to choose the best pre-pro for yourself, yeah. What would it be? And you said, I get a Denon and get an XLR yeah. converter and use that as a <laughs> yeah. pro. I mean, can you elaborate? Because I don't think a lot of people believe that, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the measured performance of their DACs coming out of those preamp outputs is better than processors. And so the only thing you get on a processor is an XLR connection. And if you don't have an XLR <laughs> amp or you don't need it because you don't have ground loops, then I see no reason to get a pre-pro. And the pre-pros are not cheaper than an AVR. They took out the amps, mm -hmm. put XLR, and they charge you more. To me, it's like, that's not it. If, if you're going to give me a charge me more, you need to give me better measured performance. And unfortunately, they have equal or worse performance. So right now, personally, I have an upgrade in my own processor. I'm like, I'm waiting for another generation. I am not spending even though I can get some of these things at dealer costs and accommodation process, I'm not getting one. I'm like, not a more worth it right mm -hmm. now. And they're four, five, six thousand dollars for this thing. That, that we'll see if the newer do... ones do better. <laughs> so now we're opening the can of worms like yep. this, right? Trinoff yeah, and, and Room Perfect, Lingdorf, yeah. and and Anthem Arc and Storm Audio. Yeah. So all I can these tell you guys... stuff about those. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone start. So, Room Perfect is great. Okay. Lingdorf's hardware was not when I tested it two years ago. And uh, they're supposed to use, adopt Purify amplification technology, so maybe that changes. The the uh, Room Correction, they're one of the pioneers in this space. The Room and Perfect. I've reviewed I Room Perfect itself, the algorithm. I've reviewed it on Audio Science Review if you want to uh, read it on my own system. Beautiful sounds. So, okay. their equalization is great. Their hardware was beautiful and nice industrial design, but measured performance was not good in the one that I measured a year and a half, two years ago. Okay. Um, what was the rest of that uh, comedy? Uh, Trinov. Trinov. Trinov, I've come so close to getting units to test, uh -huh. but it doesn't happen. I think the company contacted me, well, we don't have any to send out. Maybe in the future we will. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, the message my manufacturer is, 
if you can send me one, send me one, because then we're in communication. If I find issues, I'll tell you mm -hmm. before the review, because I know who you are. But when your customer sends me one, I'm not going trying to find you and beg for you to comment on some. I'm going to publish it first. Then you can react. But mm -hmm. a privilege you get out of a, being a manufacturer sending me stuff is as a courtesy. And I said, look, I just measured the thing. Mm -hmm. Right here, I'm seeing a serious problem. You have your own data. Is any better? Tell me. If you don't, then that's it. I'm going out with them. So I'd say, Trinov, if you're watching this, send me a unit because one of your customers will. It guaranteed Absolutely. it will. And I've come close to some companies. Some people said if I could get it, source it for them, they would buy one immediately, have me test it first. But my company is, is not, we're not a dealer and we're not that business. Right. So so I couldn't get one. So it hasn't happened. So Trinov is still outstanding. Could be great. Could be mm -hmm. not great. Certainly <laughs> their signal processing and room equalization and so forth is quite advanced. I've right. only heard of that shows. I haven't experienced it myself. But the mm -hmm. demos it show sound like it's doing the job. <laughs> well, I, I I love that comment. Oh, you know what? It's it's almost or as good as Denon. That's good enough for <laughs> me. So Denon exactly, is yeah. now the standard. <laughs> Congratulations, it is, Denon. It is. It is. And uh, funny thing about them, their Moran's line is terrible. They take the wait, exact wait, what? beautiful. Yeah, Moran's is one step supposedly above Denon. And so when you say they're yeah. terrible, what is it they're missing? What's wrong with, with Moran's? They take that identical platform now. I mean, they used to be separate companies, but now they're the same right. company. So they take that identical platform. First, they butcher the nice, beautiful display and make it this little round porthole where you can't <laughs> right, see right, it. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm like, what is it, a ship or something? It's not, you know, I don't like porthole. But anyway, so usability is not as good. But the bigger thing is that they put these discrete buffers in there, these HDM modules, and they add noise and distortion in the process for no good reason. I mean, I ask them, why did you do that? You know, it measures worse. Yeah, it measures worse. Well, our people think it sounds better. I'm like, wow, well, is it a blind test, a control test? No, because I can guarantee you, when you just added noise and distortion, I don't see how that, and by the way, the distortion isn't high enough to be euphonic. For somebody right. say, oh, yeah, it's like a tube. No, it's not that kind of distortion. It's still way <laughs> too low. So basically you're paying more, getting less usability, and getting uh, less performance. I mean, I just don't see the reason to get Once again, thank you, Amir. Wonderful interview. If you are interested in watching more of his interviews, he has a YouTube channel now. Please subscribe. And of course, we've also linked his website, Audio Science Review, below. All right, what are we to conclude from all of this? First and foremost, I like to use his test, his measurements as a heuristic for decision-making, right? A shortcut into the quality and the competency of the engineering team, of the design team, of the receiver's manufacturer, in this case, Denon. When an electronics company is able to get the little things right, the signal to noise, the signal quality, just the little things, that means they get the big things right. And more likely than not, they get more of it right than the company that gets the basics wrong. It's just like buying a car. If you get a car where the paint job is bad and the panels are off and the gaps are wide, well, what does this say about the rest of the car, right? Where the things that you cannot see. So to me, this is the case. When you have so many receivers to choose from and you're confused about which one to choose and you know nothing of receivers, let's say, if you choose the one where they engineer the little things right, it's almost safe to say that the big things, they'll get right. If you choose a receiver where the little things they get wrong, well, who knows? Maybe it's a crapshoot about the big things. And that is why on that alone, that quality alone, I've selected the Denon. Hey, this is a great receiver because more likely than not, if you know nothing of receivers, this will do the job. But let's be more specific. Let's say you do know what your use case is and let's compare to receivers, right? I think the best way to do that is we will use the highest ranked receiver on Amir's website, which is the Denon X3700H. We'll compare it against the Yamaha that's twice as much right there. And what you can see is, oh, look, the Yamaha, you know, points, scores, it's a little bit higher. Does that mean it's a better receiver? Not necessarily. Dive into the specs and you will see that where the Yamaha beats the Denon is in more multi-zones, more room support, slightly more powerful amplifier, but where it majorly loses, <laughs> we're talking far behind, video processing and 
audio processing modes, the two most important parts of a receiver, it falls way behind. So what does that mean? It means that Yamaha invested a lot of money in amplifier power and maybe supporting multi-zone rooms or multi-zones. That's not easy. But if you only have one room, paying more for the Yamaha gets you absolutely nothing more. But you don't realize that, right? Because you're thinking, oh, it was more expensive. It must be better. If you have multi-zones that needs to be supported, absolutely, it's better. But if all you need is good cinema in one room, you've just added features that you didn't need, right? And more importantly, the Yamaha is missing some features that, well, in a cinema home theater environment, it actually ends up being important. And that's what I'm talking about is know your use case before you upgrade. So we already got, if you didn't buy anything yet and you're just buying blind, Denon is safe, but let's say you have a Denon and you're ready to upgrade. Is it worth upgrading from a receiver to a separate pre-pro? What are you upgrading? And this is very controversial. The answer to this question, well, you've seen Amir's answer, right? His answer is, no, I wouldn't upgrade. I'd stick with the Denon and then just use external amps and I'm done, right? But that's his use case. Your use case may be different. What is a use case that justifies paying more for a monolith HTP1, that's $4,000, or a Lingdorf, right? MP60, that's over 10,000, like 14, 15,000. A Trinov, 18,000 to 38,000. A Storm Audio, over 20,000. I mean, we have these pre-pros that are expensive. Why upgrade? What are they needing? What feature that's in these pre-pros that's not in the best Denons? And the answer is quite simple. It's just more support for more channels in the way you want it. For example, independently calibrated subwoofers. That's hard. And the Denon doesn't do that very well. As a matter of fact, it doesn't do it at all. But if you want support to independently calibrate two, three, four subwoofers, you may have to look at separates or Let's say you want to visualize Atmos, object spatial orientation of the sounds, you have to get the trin off, right? The trin off gives you that visual representation of where the sound is relative to your speakers. It's amazing, but it's unique to the trin off. Is it worth an extra $15,000 for that, $16,000? It might be, depends on what you do, right? So at the end of the day, if you know why you're upgrading to separates, then by all means, you have a reason. But if you're just upgrading blindly because your friends are saying you'll get better sound quality, that's a whole different ball of wax because as we've seen, sound quality, well, is there's, there's a lot of impact on sound quality. If your room has bad acoustics and you don't use any room treatment, upgrading is pointless. Treat your room first or your subwoofers are placed bad. Upgrading doesn't help because their room correction doesn't fix for, does not fix bad subwoofer placement, right? So it's very complicated when you upgrade. Know why you're upgrading. So before we wrap up in the final analysis, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe. And after this video, there's more here, 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 and here. In conclusion, if you're new to home theater and you want a receiver that just works because you need Atmos, Denon is my choice. If you have a Denon and you're wondering if you should upgrade, well, if you're wondering, then you do not need to upgrade. And if you know why you're upgrading, well, that's the only time you will upgrade. <laughs> Until next time, stop the FOMO.